What is Reynolds number? In aircraft design, especially in airfoil design, Reynolds number is extremely important because it substantially affects the performance of an airfoil. Reynolds number is the ratio of inertial forces of movement to viscous forces of fluid. Here is the equation. Rho represents density of fluid, in this case air. Air density decreases as altitude increases. V represents air velocity above boundary layer. C bar represents mean geometric core of a wing. The Greek letter mu is dynamic viscosity. Sometimes it's called absolute viscosity. As a measure of force, dynamic viscosity is a ratio of shear stress to shear strain rate. This equation is called Newton's law of viscosity. Shear stress developed due to the velocity difference between two layers of airflow. Shear strain rate is the rate of shear deformation, which can be calculated through the slope of velocity profile. If dynamic viscosity is divided by the fluid density, it will be kinematic viscosity, which is the measure of velocity. Both kinematic and dynamic viscosity of air can be acquired from data table at engineeringtoolbox.com. Viscosity is highly dependent on temperature. As temperature increases, air viscosity increases. Opposite from air, most liquids' viscosity decreases as temperature increases. We know when airflow passes through an airfoil, there is going to be a laminar boundary layer, which is the smooth flow sticking closely to the wing surface due to high air viscosity in this area, and the flow is dominated by viscous force. Since viscosity is inversely proportional to Reynolds number, the Reynolds number is small. In other words, Laminar flow means small Reynolds number. Turbulent flow is all the small bubbles and eddies. Turbulent flow is not sticking closely to the wing surface anymore due to low air viscosity in this area. And the flow is dominated by inertial force, meaning there is more energy in the flow. Therefore, Reynolds number is high for turbulent flow. If we look at the flat plate, the lamina to turbulent transition Reynolds number will be around 500,000. This equation shows you how Reynolds number affects friction coefficient for lamina and turbulent flow. Since aerodynamic friction is caused by viscosity, friction is also inversely proportional to Reynolds number. Higher Reynolds number means lower friction coefficient, which also means lower skin friction drag. If you look at a pipe or a tube, the Reynolds number equation will be the same except C bar need to be changed to the diameter D. When Reynolds number is lower than about 2000, the flow is slow and is lamina. The flow particles stay in line and the velocity profile is parabolic due to high viscosity. If Reynolds number is higher than about 4000, the flow is fast and is turbulent comes with chaotic variables and eddies. Because we lost viscosity in this case, we can assume the velocity profile is far more flat. Reynolds number is similarity parameter, which means the Reynolds number engineers analyzed from a small airplane model in a wind tunnel should be close to the Reynolds number of a full-size aircraft in real life. So how does Reynolds number affect an airfoil? Here's an airfoil's leaf curve, which is explained in my video how leaf is affected by angle of attack. Leaf curve tells you the maximum leaf coefficient and stall angle of attack. This curve is called drag polar, which shows the relationship between drag coefficient and leaf coefficient. Higher Reynolds number can create higher maximum leaf coefficient and stall angle of attack in the leaf curve and make the drag polar become wider. We can increase the Reynolds number again. The increase in Reynolds number does not affect the linear region to the leaf curve or affect the minimum drag coefficient in the drag polar. By understanding how Reynolds number affect leaf curve and drag polar, you will be able to read Abbott and von Donhoff curves, which experimentally determine characteristics for many NACA airfoils based on NASA reports on detailed geometric and aerodynamic data. Abbott and von Donhoff curves are particularly valuable for aeronautical engineers. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and leave the comment below. It'll be very helpful. Thank you for watching.